In this tutorial, I'll show you how you can export something from one file in Node.js and then import and use that thing in another file. It could be a function, it could be an object, it could even be a primitive. We will learn how to do that in this tutorial. So here's the problem we left the last tutorial with. We have an add.js, which has an add function and it also printed something to the console, which is not important. We have first RJS, which would like to use the add function, which is in add RJS, right? But I cannot use it over here, even though I have required it. Require just executes that file, but then it does not carry over the namespace. So I lose the function in the namespace. I cannot use that add function. So how do I deal with it? How do I export the add function in the add.js and then import it and use it in the main JavaScript class, which is first rjs. The way to do this is by using a special keyword called module and then use a property on it called exports. Okay, if I do this, this particular thing is what contains what you wanna export out of this module. Right? I told you that add.js is a module on its own. By default, a module is encapsulated and anything you want to take out of the module and access in another module, in another file, you will have to consciously tell Node.js that you want to do that. You need to say, hey, Node.js, I would like to export these things out of this module. Right? In this case, I want to export this add function. So I need to say, hey, Node.js, module.exports is that function. I want this add function to be exported out. Now that I have this, what Node.js is going to do is when you require a file which has an export, the require is going to return as a return type, let's say var foo equals, right? So this foo after require executes, this foo is going to be whatever you have exported. Here in this case, it's the add function. So let me call this add function, okay? Now this is a variable that holds the return of the require. The return of this require in this case for this particular file is whatever we have assigned to module.exports. So in this case, there's gonna be the add function. And now I'm going to call that add function. So this add function is gonna be just a pointer to this function over here. And now, if I were to execute the same file, you notice that I can access that function which is in another file, okay? I have exported it. I've said, hey, Node.js, I know you encapsulate modules, but I want this guy to be returned by whoever is requiring me, All right? That's what this add.js is doing. I want this function to be the return of whoever is requiring this file, right? That's what you're doing here. Now this can be a bunch of stuff, right? It doesn't have to be just the add. So let's say I want to create a function called subtract, which takes in A and B, and then it returns A minus B. Now let's say you want to export this too. So here's something you can do. Instead of exporting just the function, I can do this in a couple of ways. I can export an object which contains both the add and the subtract. All right, so this is a shorthand notation, by the way. When I'm doing this without the key value property, this is basically an equivalent of doing add colon add and subtract, colon subtract, right? The newer version of JavaScript, you don't have to do this if the key and the value match, you can just remove this, but basically this is what I'm doing, right? I'm creating a new object here, an inline object, which is which has two properties, add and subtract. The add property is assigned to this add function here, and the subtract property is assigned to this subtract function. And this is the object that I'm exporting, right? If I were to do this, well then, this is no longer the add function. What I get here is, it's that object. All right, so I'm gonna call this operators object. And then 
in order to access the add function, I need to do operators object dot add. So I am getting this object, which is what is returned in module.exports, and then I'm accessing the add property on it, which is what points to this add method that I have over here, and then I'm executing that. This should return the same result, and it does. This is one way you can export it. The other way, and the recommended way, is using something like this. Module exports dot add equals add module exports dot subtract equals subtract. Right? Works exactly the same way, but there is a reason why I'm recommending this, and I'll cover that reason in the next tutorial. But this is exactly the same as what I did with an inline object. This too works. And since I haven't changed the object definition, what is in the exports is going to be two properties, add and subtract. So nothing has to change when it's being consumed. There is a shorthand to this, though. Instead of doing module.exports everywhere, you can actually get rid of this module and just call it exports, OK? Basically, exports is another keyword which is similar to module in the sense that it's available to you in your JavaScript files in Node.js. But exports is basically, imagine Node.js basically running a var exports equals module.exports, right? So this is going to be there by default. So exports is this reference to module.exports so that you don't actually have to type module.exports every time. There is a catch to this, though. And uh, when I said I'm going to cover this in the next tutorial, I lied. I'm going to cover this now. If you were to use exports, you need to be careful. Here's why. So let's say I don't want to do it. I don't want to uh, export subtract. I just want to export add. OK? And um, I'm going to do this, exports equals add, which is what we did earlier, right? We did module.exports equals add. I'm going to do exports equals add. And then here, I'm going to just call this var add equals require. And then I don't need this anymore. I'm going to call add directly. OK, simple. I'm doing exports equals add because I want to export the add function. There's only one thing that I want to export from the add.js. And in first.js, the require is going to return that thing that I'm exporting which is this guy. So I'm creating an add variable. You can call this any name. It really doesn't matter. I'm creating that variable to hold on to that reference. And I'm calling this here. Will this work? Here's the tricky part. It will not work. You run this. It'll not work. Why? The reason it'll not work is, remember I told you, you can think of it as something like this. Export equals module dot exports. Okay, you can think of Node.js running this in order to provide you with an alias to module.exports as a convenience feature. So you don't have to type module.exports every time. Now what happens when you assign something to exports? What happens is you're not updating the exports property of the module object anymore. Okay, what you're doing is you're replacing the reference in the exports variable with this new thing. So if I were to do this, and if I were to see what is in module.exports.add, well, this doesn't exist. There is no dot .add here because you're not adding a property to module.exports. You had an alias to it in the exports variable, and then you replace that alias with something else. So exports is an alias that points to something, but nobody's looking at it apart from you. It was provided as a convenience alias for you to populate module.exports after all. So by replacing the alias, you've achieved nothing. You haven't updated module.exports, and there is no module.exports.add, okay? So this is the reason why I told you to use 
this kind of a format. Either use module or exports all the time, or if you're using exports, just use the dot property, okay? You can actually, some people do something like this. Let's say you didn't have the console.log here, okay? You can actually do exports.add equals, and then put the function here directly. Okay, you don't need this anymore. In fact, I can use the, the fat arrow notation over here. You can use something like this, okay? You're basically assigning that function to exports.add so that there is a property on exports that contains what you wanna export and it is not overwriting that reference variable itself, okay? So with this in place, I'm going to change this again to, uh, now what would I have to do over here, right? So what I'm returning here is an object with an add property, okay? So I can either get that object and parse the add property, or again, I can use this notation to destructure the object, and I can get the add property from whatever is returned from the require, and then I can call that function here, right? So I have to print to the console here. I'm gonna get 30 printed, okay? So here I'm able to access the add by exporting from another file. And we looked at like two or three ways to do this. They all are similar, right? The export is an alias, and there are different ways to set the property on it. But this is basically how we were able to get a function from another file, and then call it from here in the file that's actually requiring it. And this is using a combination of exports and require. They're complementary, they work with each other. Now with this knowledge in place, you can see how you can break your code down into multiple different files, right? Each file is gonna be a module on its own. You can have each file contain all the different properties that you want to export and then put it into the exports object, right? You can set properties on the exports object and then you can kind of structure your whole code base based on this. Now this is one aspect of require and export. You can require another file in your same project. It can be in the same path or it can be in a nested path or whatever else. You can require another file that you have written. Now there is another aspect to require which is super powerful and that is by using APIs and libraries. There are a couple of other things that you can require. One is using Node.js APIs the second is using third-party libraries. In the next tutorial, we'll look at how to use require to use Node.js APIs. We'll see you there.